Continuing on with my read aloud series from Indian Economic Development, textbook for class 11, which we are doing for class 12, doing unit 3, current challenges facing the Indian economy. I'm reading from chapter 8, infrastructure, and in that we finished energy, and now we are going to do the social infrastructure health. So you agree with me that healthy people are indeed assets of a nation. It is very important to have capable and qualified health professionals. And with today's advancement in machine and technology, to have advanced machines for diagnostic reasons or for even operational. So it is not only the absence of disease, but also the ability to realize one's potential. It is a yardstick of one's well-being. Health is a holistic process related to the overall growth and development of the nation. Though the 20th century has seen a global transformation in human health unmatched in, the history, in history, it may be difficult to define the health status of a nation in terms of a single set of measures. Generally, scholars assess people's health by taking into account indicators like infant mortality and maternal mortality rates, life expectancy and nutritional levels, along with the incidence of communicable and non-communicable diseases. Development of health infrastructure ensures a country of healthy manpower for production of goods and services. In recent times, scholars argue that people are entitled to health care facilities. In recent times, scholars argue that people are entitled to health care facilities. It is the responsibility of the government to ensure the right to healthy living. Health infrastructure includes hospitals, doctors, nurses and other paramedical professionals, beds, equipment required in hospitals and a well-developed pharmaceutical industry. It is also true that mere presence of health infrastructure is not sufficient to have healthy people. The same should be accessible to all the people since the initial stages of planned development, policy makers envisage that no individual should fail to secure medical care, curative and preventive, because of the inability to pay for it. But are we able to achieve this vision? Before we discuss various health infrastructure, let us discuss the status of health in India. State of health infrastructure. The government has the constitutional obligation to guide and regulate all health-related issues such as medical education, adulteration of food, drugs and poisons, medical profession, vital statistics, mental deficiency and lunacy. The union government involves the union government evolves broad policies and plans through the Central Council of Health and Family Welfare. It collects information and renders financial and technical assistance to state governments, union territories and other bodies for implementation of important health programs in the country. Over the years, India has built up a vast health infrastructure and manpower at different levels. At the village level, a variety of hospitals, technically known as primary health centers, PHCs, we'll see that in box 8.5, have been set up by the government. India also has a large number of hospitals run by voluntary agencies and the private sector. These hospitals are manned by professionals and paramedical professionals trained in medical pharmacy and nursing colleges. Since independence, there has been significant expansion in the physical provision of health services. During 1951 to 2000, the number of hospitals and dispensaries has dispensaries increased from 
so once again during 1951 to 2000 we find the number of hospitals and dispensaries increased from 9300 to 43300 and hospital beds from 1.2 million to 7.2 million and during 1951 to 2010 nursing personnel from 0.18 lakh to 14.31 lakhs and allopathic doctors from 0.62 lakhs to 6 lakhs and this expansion of health infrastructure has resulted in the eradication of smallpox uh, guinea worms and other and the near eradication of polio and leprosy so the data that we uh, just talked about is the source was national commission on macroeconomics and health ministry of health and family welfare government of india new delhi 2005 and national health profile 2010 www. it is uh, cb h idghs dot nick dot in so you can go and find out a little more about that but now we are going to talk about private sector health infrastructure so private sector health infrastructure in recent times while the public sector public health sector has not been so successful in delivering the goods about which we will study more in the next section private sector has grown by leaps and bounds more than 70 percent how many 70 percent more than 70 percent of the hospitals in india are run by private sector they control nearly two-fifths of beds available in the hospitals nearly 60 percent dispensaries are run by the same private sector they provide health care to about 80 percent of outpatients and 46 percent of inpatients in recent times private sector has been playing a dominant role in medical education and training medical technology and diagnostics manufacture and sales sale of pharmaceuticals hospital construction and the provision of medical services in 2001 and 2 13 lakh medical enterprises employing 22 lakh people uh, so there were how many 13 lakh medical enterprises employing 22 lakh people more than 60 percent of them more than sorry 80 percent 80 percent of them are single person owned and operated by so person occasionally employing a hired workers worker occasionally employing a hired worker scholars point out that the private sector in india has grown independently without any major regulation some private practitioners are not even registered doctors and are known as quacks since the 1990s owing to liberalization measures many non-resident indians and industrial and pharmaceutical companies have set up state-of-the-art super speciality hospitals that attract india's rich and medical tourists we'll uh, read the box 8.6 later as medical tourism do you think most people in india can get access to such super speciality hospitals why not what could be done so that every person in india accesses a decent quality health care so then we talk about the indian system of medical medicine indian systems of medicines we'll be doing that in the next class or rather let me read it out ism indian system of medicines it includes six systems and it's known as ayush a for ayurveda y for yoga u for yunani S for Siddha, Naturopathy and Homeopathy. At present, there are 3,529 ISM hospitals, 24,943 dispensaries and as many as 6.5 lakh registered practitioners in India. But little has been done 
to set up a framework to standardize education or to promote research. ISM has huge potential and can solve a large part of our healthcare problems because they are effective, safe and inexpensive. In the next class, I'll be reading the uh, critical appraisal.